Here is a first example of using the transformation technique. Let the random variable x be uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. Find the cumulative distribution function of the random variable y, which is the square root of x. Now in this picture down below here, I have x on the horizontal axis. I have the random variable y on the vertical axis. If x lies between 0 and 1, then y, which is the square root of x, will also lie on 0, 1. But notice as I took a couple points here at point 0.2, point 0.4, point 0.6, and point 0.8, and I transformed them using y is equal to the square root of x as my transformation, more of the points towards the top here, they kind of get bunched up more towards the higher part of the distribution of y. And that's something that we're going to see as we work through the details on this transformation. Go ahead and start out here with fx of x. Notice I've got to put in that capital X here as a subscript because it's not clear whether I'm dealing with x or I'm dealing with y. So I put in the subscript. This will be 1 for x values between 0 and 1. And because of that, to find the cumulative distribution function of x, remember we haven't, we haven't brought y into the picture yet, this will be the integral from 0 up to x of the probability density function, which is 1 dw. And the integral of 1 dw is just going to be w evaluated between 0 and x. When you plug in x, you get just x. And when you plug in 0, you get 0. And that will be defined on the support. I won't write it out here in the three pieces, but if I was being careful, I would say it's 0 for x less than or equal to 0, x between 0 and 1, and 1 for x values greater than 1. The next thing we do is we move to the CDF technique. And in this technique, you always start out the same way. That's one thing nice about the CDF technique. You always start out by writing down the definition of the CDF of y. And there it is. That's always the first step with the CDF technique. Now, the second step is also consistent in the CDF technique. You replace capital Y by its transformation you replace y with the square root of x. Now the next step is to try to write the inequality here in terms of x alone. And you can do that by squaring both sides of that inequality. And you get this. Now remember, the probability x is less than or equal to something is just going to be the definition of the CDF of x. And that looks like this. Finally, the last step, if we know that the CDF of x is just x, then this will turn out to be y squared. Don't forget, you have to write the support out here. And in this case, 0 is less than y is less than 1. Again, if you were being careful, you'd write out all three of the pieces of this. Quick picture of what we have here. And that is, here is y. And here is 0 and 1. Likewise, here is the CDF of y. And uh, to the left of 0, this will be at 0. Let's put a 1 up here. Between 0 and 1, the CDF of y is y squared. So you get a parabola in here. And then when you are greater than 1, it will always be 1. So there is a picture of the CDF of y. Now we have answered the question at this point. Find the cumulative distribution function of y, which is the square root of x. We're done at this point. But if you wanted to find the density function, the probability density function, little f 
sub y of y. You would go back up here and say if the CDF is y squared all I have to do is differentiate that and when you differentiate it you get 2y and that's defined on its support 0 is y is less than 1. And this right here is a function which is basically just a ramp and notice it has more density to the right which is exactly what we suspected from our picture here that we drew at the beginning of solving this problem.